let's sketch the function y equal to natural log of x squared minus x. So before we get started, let's review the graph for natural log of x itself. For this graph, there are four things we need to remember. The first three are going to be three points. If I put e into natural log of x, natural log of e is equal to 1. If I put 1 into natural log of x, natural log of 1 is equal to 0. And if I put e to the minus 1 into natural log of x, natural log of e to the minus 1 is equal to minus 1. So we plot these points. e is roughly 2.7. So I go over 2.7. Up 1 gives me a point. I have the point over 1 up 0 gives me another point. And then e to the minus 1 is roughly 1 third. So that's going to be over a third and then down by 1. So those three points we want to memorize. The fourth thing we want to remember is there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. So with that asymptote drawn in, it's now just connect the dots. And that's my graph of natural log of x. And we also note from the picture, the domain is just x bigger than 0. Now, for natural log of x squared minus x, I first want to find the domain. The rule is going to be natural log of box will be defined whenever box is bigger than 0. So we're interested in when x squared minus x is bigger than 0. To figure out where that occurs, I'm going to just factor, set it equal to 0 to get boundary points, and then I'll check a point in each region. So the zeros will be at 0 and 1, because when I factor, I get x times x minus 1. Check a point in this region. I put minus 2 in here. I get 4 minus minus 2, which gives me 6, which is positive, which makes sense when we stick it into the box. So this whole region less than 0, I can use. If we look at a half for the middle region, put a half into x squared minus x, I get 1 fourth minus a half gives me minus a fourth. If I stick that into natural log, it won't take it. It doesn't take ne negative numbers. So the region from 0 to 1, we discard. Finally, I take 2 to check the last region. 2 squared minus 2 gives me 2, which is positive. So we can take the region x bigger than 1. So our domain is everything except that hole from 0 to 1. Next step for the graph, we can look for zeros. So if we look at the graph of natural log of x, the only place we get a zero is when we stick one in for box. So what I'm interested in is, when does box equal one? Because if box equals one, a zero comes out. So we're interested in when x squared minus x is equal to one. I push the one to the other side, and then the quadratic equation gives me x is minus 0.6 or x is 1.6. So those are my zeros. Finally, I want to know where the asymptotes are. Okay, in this case, they're vertical. So again, we know we get a vertical asymptote when I put a zero in for box. So we have x squared minus x equal to zero, gives me x equal to zero or one. So I have vertical asymptotes at x equals zero and x equal to one. Let's take a look at the graph, which is already finished, but we can verify. So first off, we have our domain is everything but the hole from 0 to 1 here. We just showed that we have vertical asymptotes at x equals 0 and x equal to 1. And then we also have zeros at 1.6, so that's 1 and that's roughly 0.6, and also at minus 0.6. So those three things pan out with the graph on the board. Let's take a look at increasing and decreasing. So I calculate the derivative. Okay, the rule for y prime is going to be take box, put it in the bottom, and then take the derivative on top of box. So I put my x squared minus x in the bottom. Derivative of the top is 2x minus 1. So we want to know when this is equal to 0. The only way this can be equal to 0 is if the top is equal to 0. The only way the top is equal to 0 is if x is equal to 1 half. 
but this never happens because one half falls into this hole that we're throwing away. So there are no critical points for this function. What we can do, though, is check one point in each region of the domain to see if we're increasing or decreasing. So if I check y prime at 2, we stick that into here, and then we notice we get 3 halves. That's positive. So we're increasing on this region here. If I put a minus 1 in, I'm going to get minus 3 halves. That's negative. So I'm decreasing on this region over here. So that takes care of increasing and decreasing. For y double prime, I'm going to use my quotient rule. It's kind of a mess. But at the end of the day, what I get is minus 2x squared minus 2x minus 1 over x squared times x minus 1 squared. If I try to find the roots in the top part of this equation. We're going to wind up taking the square root of negative number. So that's going to be garbage. There's going to be no zeros for this equation. So that's going to mean, again, I only need to check one point in each region to check concavity. So I put in for 2. We put 2 into this over here. And I get minus 13 over 4, which is negative. So it's concave down on this region over here. If I put minus 2 in, I get a minus 5 over 4 times 9, which is negative. So I'll get concave down on this side also. So decreasing means we look like this. Concave down says the bowl is going down. So this is going to look like this. And this has to meet up with our vertical asymptote at 0. On this side, we have increasing and concave down. Increasing is going this way. Concave down is bowl going down. So it's going to look like this. And then that has to meet up with our vertical asymptote at x equal to 1. So that's going to be the sketch of y equal to natural log of x squared minus x.